Yes, Catanians, you have read the title right. You are, your eyes are not being deceived. I am going to play the tutorial for Rise of the Inca with the plan to finally jump into a new expansion. I've been playing so much Basic Catan, Seafarers, Cities and Knights, and Cities and Knights with Seafarers. But I was like, if I want to be a true Catan master, I need to keep branching out. So here we are with Rise of the Inca, and it says, if you already know the rules of the base game, then we're going to go ahead and skip the starting phase. And if you haven't played the base game, you don't know how to play, you should know how to play before you even attempt to come in here and play some Rise of the Inca. So our goal is to fully develop three Inca tribes. The first tribe is complete with four victory points, and I believe you need to have four settlements or two settlements in one city. So that is pretty standard. That makes sense, easy to follow. Some things are different on the game board. There are your five main resources, but wheat is now called potatoes. Oh yes, common resources are clay, wood, wool, potatoes, and ore. New are the Inca trade goods, feathers, coca, and fish. I don't know if they meant cocoa, but it's coca, C-O-C-A. So we have some new, instead of commodities, they're Inca trading goods. So we're going to roll the dice and we get a 10. And keep in mind the tutorial is the same every time to help you. You can play it a few times to get a grip on this expansion. So we want to build a settlement next to the goods, the good feathers. And it looks like that is on that 8. So that is that icon with the, the feather with the two yellow feathers coming out the sides and then the red feather in the middle. And we have just enough cards to build a settlement. So it looks like a settlement is clay, sheep, wood, and potatoes. So not your typical wood, brick, sheep, and wheat, but it's basically follows the same, same rules for building a settlement. Okay, so the first two tribes need four settlements or two settlements in a city. And then your final tribe, you only need three settlements or one settlement in one city. So we'll see how that plays out. It looks like me and all the other com computers are still on the first tribe. I have three victory points. If I get another victory point, then I will have completed my first tribe. And then we'll see what happens after that. I assume the rolls are going to go mostly in our favor. In turn, for the sake of the tutorial. So I have two, so a coca, feathers, and fish. So I, it looks like I have two coca in my hand, and I just got one wood. We'll let the other computer roll, there's a five. And look at the board. The board is very interesting because, as our guide is saying, the jungle is on the right, but you can't go out and build in the jungle. You can only build on hexes that border the jungle that are also part of the main island. And we're gonna trade in. So common resource get traded in at three for one. You can trade two of the same Inca goods, which would be fish, coca, or feathers, at a two for one rate all the time. So you get that automatically. Okay, that's cool. So instead of having a four for one, any of the common resources, they're automatically three for one in Rise of the Inca. So I get two of my coca, trade in for a clay, and I'm going to build another road. It looks like I'm going to go over and build on that nine fish hex. So uh, funny, I've, I'm not used to saying these these new uh, new phrases and terms. New Nine fish. And it's in the water, which makes sense. But now you can build on the coastline and you benefit from things in the water in this expansion. Nice four gets rolled, so I do get some clay. So... Basically, you have jungle, which is going to... The jungle and the water look like they help you get Inca trading goods. And then the main island uh, makes up the rest of your, your common resources that you would need. So it, you can't just build on the main island. You have to build on the main island, but also build out to the coast on your left side, like we're about to do with this settlement. And then you also have to build on the main island and build to the right towards the jungle because you need to get those other two trade do trading Inca trading goods, which would be the coca and the feathers. 
Okay, so with our fourth victory point, our first tribe reaches its peak, and a new tribe is founded. Hooray, but since life isn't fair, your old tribe is declining. Oh, come on. Okay, so those four settlements are now in decline. The settlements in the city of your old tribe are then overgrown by the jungle. Okay, so the jungle has its downsides. A declining tribe sadly can't be expanded. So I guess that means we can't build roads off of a declining tribe. Both you and your rival's declining settlements can each be replaced by a new one. Okay. As long as the declining settlement isn't replaced, you'll get resources and goods. So I guess those can be built over. We'll see how that goes. Every player starts his or her second tribe with a settlement without a road. So that is a key difference from any of the other expansions so far. The new settlement can only be built on open intersections and must observe the distance rule. So two roads away from any other, or two spaces away from any other existing settlement or city, even if it is declined. So it wants me to build right there on the six potatoes, not six wheat, six potatoes, ten potatoes, and what was that other one? A nine wood. All right, so it wants me to move on to the next part of the tutorial. The second tribe was expanded with two roads. Okay, so we jumped a little bit ahead. It looks like me, uh, Jean, which is yellow, and blue is William. We're all on working on building up our second tribe. Lynn is still working on building on her first tribe. Oh no, another player built his or her settlement over one of your settlements. So one that I, that I had to, um, that was declined. So, but it looks like I can... Since they built over my declining settlement, but then they finished, completed their tribe, their settlement also went in decline. So now I, I have the opportunity to build back over on that same spot and reclaim my 9 lumber, 4 clay, 11 coca spot. So it's no longer Jean's because she moved on to the next tribe. And thus that settlement that she spot that she basically stole from me, it went in decline and then I was able to hop on that spot once again. So another four, some more clay. I have I have a fish in my hand from the nine. Even though that settlement on the coastline has declined, I still will benefit off of it. And it looks like the robber is on my eight. Yep, the robber is sitting on your ore field. This field can't generate any resources. They spelled resources with an extra S. The robber is placed next to a field of a declining tribe. The robber can steal one random card from the owner of this tribe. Okay, easy to follow. We already played two combat arts cards. For each of these cards, you can hold one more card on your hand when a seven gets rolled. Okay, that's interesting. So, kind of like city walls and cities and nights. So I have eight cards in my hand, but it's not showing red. It's not pulsing red like the other players who have more than seven cards. So even if I roll a seven, I will not burn cards, even though I have eight cards in my hand. Mightiest Combat Arts. The player who has this card can send the robber from one of his or her tiles once in his or her turn. Very interesting. So anytime the robber's on one of your hexes, and you have the Mightiest Arts card, you can actually move the robber off of one of your hexes once, once per turn. So we'll chase away the robber, and there's no, we don't have any building in knights, like in Cities and Knights, we don't have to play a knight card in Basic Catan, or Seafarers. So I chase it away, and it looks like it just goes directly back to a jungle hex with no number on it. I wonder if that happens every time. We got Longish Trade Route, even though we only have length 3. No victory points are assigned for Longish Trade Route. Well, that's a bummer. I love getting victory points off of Longish Road, Longish Trade Route. But I guess there will be some kind of benefit to getting Longish Trade Route. So I built another road. And I look like I'm in a prime spot to take over Jean's declining tribe on the 4 clay, 9 ore, and 10 feathers. So we'll see how that goes here. It looks like I'm pretty close to being able to build a city. I just need one more ore. I get a potato and a sheep. There must be some kind of trade I'll be able to do. Maybe that longish trade route is going to give me some sort of bonus. Inca trading goods. Roll the dice. 
There goes a three. Okay, I didn't get anything. Longest trade route advantage. Okay, here we go. Now you can trade any two goods or resources. So I can only tell you when the two for one trade through the longest trade route is possible. Oh, okay, I see. So I can, any of my common resources are now at a two for one rate, even though they say three for one above all of them. You'll see on that right side, I have the longest trade route icon. So I can trade two potatoes for a clay, even though it says three for one above the potatoes icon. Because I have longest trade route, any resources are now two for one rate on the trade into the bank. So I trade in for the clay, and now I can build a settlement over Gene's decline settlement. And now I have a, another really good spot on the board. So I am at three victory points on my second tribe. And if I get one more victory point, then I complete the second tribe and then I move on to the final third tribe. Lynn's going to roll. Ten. I'm excited to try this out on a, in an online match. I might have to play against computers a few times to get used to it, but this looks really interesting. There goes a three. I don't benefit from it. Too bad there's no science bonus, right, from Cities and Knights. Okay, there goes a four. Now I get something. I get two clay. By now we have three different Inca goods. You can trade them for two common resources. Sounds like a good deal. Okay. That's interesting, because before, you start out with, if you have any two of the same Inca good, you can trade them in at a two for one rate for any one common resource. Trade three different Inca goods for one ore and one potato. Okay, wow, that's a, new, that's a new style of trading that I'm not used to. So I go to the bank, and I can trade one coca, one feather, and one fish. The combination of those three will allow me to trade, trade in for any two common resources that I want. A three-for-two trade. That's a first for me. That's pretty cool. Usually, you, that was something I always dreamed of to be able to do in... And the other expansions to trade, you know, different cards and then combine them together to trade for other other cards that I needed. And here we go. You're finally able to do something like that. So now I, because I traded in for an ore and a potato, I can build a city. Cities are built with ores and potatoes. Go figure. And that looks like, yep, my second tribe has been brought to success. Because that brings me to four victory points. So first tribe, you have to get to four victory points. Second tribe, you also have to get to four victory points. And then the third tribe, you only have to get to three victory points. So they say on the final tribe, choose a position that can't be blocked by a rival. Because if, if you place your settlement for your third tribe in an area that could easily be surrounded by other declining settlements and other new settlements, then you're kind of going to be you're going to be stuck because you're only building one settlement. So you have to be able to, you know, branch out from there because you could upgrade that settlement into a city, but then you'll only be at two victory points. And if you're surrounded, you, there's no way to get that third victory point. So that's an interesting note. We'll have to see how that works with the strategies when we start playing rise of the Inca. So I build it on the eight or five potato, 10 sheep. And I have two open areas to explore. I can go towards the nine fish, or I could go down towards the ten sheep, three potato. And I see that the only person close to finishing a tribe is Lynn. So if Lynn completed their tribe, they could try to block me and build their new settlement for their new tribe on the nine fish, eight ore. But since it's the tutorial, I believe that's not going to happen. But just trying to look out for future uh, strategic elements to the game. Oh, we can buy development cards. I wonder if development cards in Rise of the Inca are similar to development cards in Basic Catan and or Seafarers. Oh, we got a Monopoly. Does that Monopoly allow me to steal every single card of one particular resource? Or maybe I can steal tr Inca trading goods, perhaps? We'll see. 
or maybe it's like resource monopoly in cities and nights where you can only have you steal up to two of a resource from each player okay there goes a five now I'm on potatoes with a five so I do get that William is gonna roll an 11 I get coca so I have two coca two feathers two potatoes one ore one sheep three clay Oh, and I don't have long longest trade route anymore. Because when you're when you finish a tribe and you move on to the next one, I it looks like all your roads get taken away, and then you have to start over. Okay, only one more victory point to win. You could try to expand a settlement to a city, but you still need potatoes. Oh, uh, okay, that's where Monopoly is going to come in handy. So let's see. Name a resource. Each opponent must give you two. Of that resource if they have them okay so that's basically like resource monopoly in cities and nights and it said resource specifically so I don't think I can select Inca trading goods with monopoly when I actually play a real game of rise of the Inca so I basically got two potatoes from each player so now I have plenty of potatoes and I have plenty of ore so I'll build my city for a third victory point and since it's the third tribe I should be good to go to win the game. That's it right there. Congratulations. Okay, thank you. Have this where the tutorial ends. Okay. So it's not a whole... Well, I mean, it's definitely different from Basic Catan. But if you know how to play Basic Catan very well, this is not going to be like, you know, that much more you have to pick up on and learn. There's just a... I would say it's it's a little bit harder to to learn initially than seafarers when building up upon basic Gatan, but it's not nearly as much information overload as cities and knights can be because there's so much going on with all new progress cards, metropolises, barbarians, knights. This is like a nice happy medium in between seafarers and cities and knights with trying to learn a new expansion. So I'm definitely going to be trying this one out. Let me know what you guys think of Rise of the Inca. And we'll see if I can get some videos of that out here on the channel. Take care.